Sir Daniel Michael Blake Day Lewis is an English retired actor. Often described as one of the greatest actors in the history of cinema, he received numerous accolades throughout his career, which spanned born April 29, 1957, age 67 years, Kensington, London, United Kingdom. Spouse, Rebecca Miller, M. 1996. Children, Gabriel Kane Day Lewis, Ronan Day Lewis, Cashel Blake Day Lewis. Height, 1.87 meters. Parents, Cecil Day Lewis, Jill Balcone. Siblings, Tamison Day Lewis, Sean Day Lewis, Nicholas Day Lewis. Born in London, England, Daniel Michael Blake Day Lewis is the second child of Cecil Day Lewis, poet laureate of the UK, and his second wife, actress Jill Balkan. His maternal grandfather was Sir Michael Balkan an important figure in the history of British cinema, and head of the famous Ealing Studios. His older sister, Thomason Day-Lewis, is a documentarian. His father was of Northern Irish and English descent, and his mother was Jewish, from a family from Latvia and Poland. Daniel was educated at Seven Oaks School in Kent, which he despised, and the more progressive Biddles in Petersfield, which he adored. He studied acting at the Bristol Old Vic School. Daniel made his film debut in Sunday Bloody Sunday, 1971, but then acted on stage with the Bristol Old Vic and Royal Shakespeare Companies, and did not appear on screen again until 1982, when he landed his first adult role, a bit part in Gandhi, 1982. He also appeared on British television that year in Frost in May, 1982, and How Many Miles to Babylon, 1982. Notable theatrical performances include Another Country, 1982-83, Dracula, 1984, and The Futurists, 1986. His first major, supporting role in a feature film was in The Bounty, 1984, quickly followed by My Beautiful Laundrette, 1985, and A Room with a View, 1985. The latter two films opened in New York on the same day, offering audiences and critics evidence of his remarkable range and establishing him as a major talent. The New York film critics named him Best Supporting Actor for those performances. In 1986, he appeared on stage in Richard Ayres, The Futurists, and on television in Ayres' production of The Insurance Man, 1986. He also had a small role in a British, French film, Nanu, 1986. In 1987, he assumed leading man status in Philip Kaufman's The Unbearable Lightness of Being, 1988, followed by a comedic role in The Unsuccessful Stars, and Bars, 1988. His brilliant performance as Christy Brown in Jim Shridden's My Left Foot, 1989, won him numerous awards, including the Academy Award for Best Actor. He returned to the stage to work again with Air, as Hamlet at the National Theatre, but was forced to leave the production close to the end of its run because of exhaustion and has not appeared on stage since. He took a hiatus from film as well until 1992, when he starred in The Last of the Mohicans, 1992, a film that met with mixed reviews, but was a great success at the box office. He worked with American director Martin Scorsese in The Age of Innocence, 1993, based on Edith Wharton's novel. Subsequently, he teamed again with Jim Sheridan to star in In the Name of the Father, 1993, a critically acclaimed performance that earned him another Academy Award nomination. His next project was in the role of John Proctor in father-in-law Arthur Miller's play The Crucible, 1996, directed by Nicholas Hitner. He worked with Scorsese again to star in Gangs of New York, 2002, another critically acclaimed performance that earned him another Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. Day Lewis' wife, Rebecca Miller, offered him the lead role in her film The Ballad of Jack and Rose, 2005, in which he played a dying man with regrets over how his wife had evolved and over how he had brought up his teenage daughter. During filming, he arranged to live separate from his wife to achieve the isolation needed to focus on his own character's reality. The film received mixed reviews. In 2007, he starred in director Paul Thomas Anderson's loose adaptation of Upton Sinclair's novel, Oil, titled There Will Be Blood, 2007. Day Lewis received the Academy Award for Best Actor, BAFTA Award for Best Actor in a Leading Role, Golden Globe Award for Best Actor, Motion Picture Drama, Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance, 
by a male actor in a leading role, and a variety of film critic circle awards for the role. In 2009, Day-Lewis starred in Rob Marshall's musical adaptation 9, 2009, as film director Guido Contini. He was nominated for the Golden Globe Award for Best Actor, Motion Picture Musical or Comedy and the Satellite Award for Best Actor, Motion Picture Musical or Comedy. In mini biography by Pedro Borges, Family, Spouse, Rebecca Miller, November, the 13th, 1996, Present, to Children, Children, Cashel Blake Day Lewis, Ronan Cal Day Lewis, Gabriel Kane Day Lewis, Parents, Cecil Day Lewis, Jill Balkan, Relatives, Michael Balkan, Grandparent, Tom Mason Day Lewis, Sibling, Trademark, In depth and exhaustive preparations for roles, Frequently collaborates with directors Jim Sheridan and Martin Scorsese. His skill with accents. His characters are often deeply unsympathetic. Rich dramatic voice. Rich dramatic voice. Dramatic emotional performances. Hoop earrings. Renowned for his eloquent acceptance speeches. Is very selective in his role choices. Frequently plays powerful and influential people of the 1800s. Trivia. According to Gangs of New York, 2002, co-star John C. Riley. He got sick during shooting in Italy, refusing to trade his character's threadbare coat for a warmer coat, because the warmer coat did not exist in the 19th century, doctors finally forced him to take antibiotics. He listened to Eminem to get into an angry, self-righteous frame of mind, as Bill the Butcher while shooting Gangs of New York, 2002. During the last of the Mohicans, 1992, he built a canoe, learned to track and skin animals, and perfected the use of a 12-pound flintlock gun which he took everywhere he went, even to a Christmas dinner. He won 23 acting awards for his performance in There Will Be Blood, 2007, including the coveted Oscar. After Michael Madsen was found to be unavailable for the role, Day-Lewis tried to get the role of Vincent Vega in Pulp Fiction, 1994, one of the few times he actively pursued a role. However, by that point in the casting, Quentin Tarantino had John Travolta in mind for the role. While filming Gangs of New York, 2002, he rarely got out of character and would talk with a New York accent the whole day, and would be sharpening his knives at lunch. On June 20, 2017, he announced that he was retiring from acting, and that Phantom Thread, 2017, would be his last acting role. His U.S. agent said that this was a private decision, and that no further comment would be made on the subject. After Heath Ledger's sudden death in January 2008, Day-Lewis dedicated his 2008 SAG award to Ledger who was one of his favorite actors. He was Jonathan Demme's first choice for the role of Andrew Beckett in Philadelphia, 1993. He turned down the role to work on In the Name of the Father, 1993, and Tom Hanks was cast in Philadelphia, 1993, instead. He earned an Oscar nomination for Best Actor in In the Name of the Father, 1993, but Hanks won the Best Actor Oscar for Philadelphia. 1993. He first became interested in acting when he learned to replicate the accent and mannerisms of people in his neighborhood to avoid standing out to bullies. Several times offered and turned down the role of Regern, Strider, in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy. The role went to Viggo Mortensen. Sir John Gielgud said that he had what every actor in Hollywood wants, talent, and what every actor in England wants, looks. He originally decided to become a cabinet maker but was not accepted for an apprenticeship. In 2013, he used the international premiere of his film Lincoln, 2012, in Ireland as a fundraiser for the Wicklow Hospice Foundation, frequently called the English Robert De Niro. He has also referred to De Niro as his champion speaking of his biggest acting inspirations, along with Marlon Brando, Meryl Streep and Phil Davis. Always quiet and introverted, he said that he was not popular in school and was mocked as an outsider while growing up in England partially because he was of half-Jewish stock. The upside was that, instead of socializing, he developed a rich fantasy life that later helped him to delve so deeply into his characters. Is a skilled woodworker in addition to being able to make his living as a cobbler? Is one of six actors to have won the Academy Award three times in their career, the others in chronological order are Walter Brennan, Ingrid Bergman, Jack Nicholson, Meryl Streep and Francis McDormand. These actors have only been surpassed by Catherine Hepburn, who won the Academy Award for times during her career, McDormand's fourth Oscar, was in the Best Picture category rather than acting. Daniel's father was of Northern Irish and English descent, and was the son of the Rev. Frank Cecil Day Lewis and Kathleen Blake Squires. Daniel's mother was from a Jewish family that emigrated to the United Kingdom from Latvia and Poland, 
and was the daughter of Michael Elias Balkin and Eileen Fred Leatherman. My beautiful laundrette, 1985, and a room with a view, 1985, both opened in New York on the same day, March, the 7th, 1986. Both featured him in prominent and very different roles. In A Room with a View, he played a repressed, snobbish Edwardian upperclassman, while in My Beautiful Laundrette, he played a lower class, gay ex skinhead in love with an ambitious Pakistani businessman in Margaret Thatcher's London. When American critics saw him, he was then virtually unknown in the US, into such different roles on the same day. Many, including Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun Times and Vincent Canby of the New York Times, raved about the talent it must have taken him to play such vastly different characters. Describes himself as a lifelong study of evasion. Was considered for the role of Jesus Christ in The Passion of the Christ, 2004, but director Mel Gibson thought he looked too European. The role instead went to Jim Caviezel. Hated being at Seven Oaks School so much that he ran away. Has dual citizenship between the United Kingdom and Ireland. All six times, he has been nominated for the Best Actor Oscar. The film he was in was also nominated for Best Picture and Best Director. His performance as Christy Brown in My Left Foot, 1989, is ranked pound 11 on Premier Magazine's 100 Greatest Performances of All Time, 2006. Got to know his future wife Rebecca Miller while working on The Crucible. 1996, the film version of her father Arthur Miller's play. According to Harvey Weinstein, Day Lewis was taking time off to work as a cobbler in Florence, Italy when Weinstein, director Martin Scorsese and star Leonardo DiCaprio lured him into coming back to New York, on false pretenses, so they could persuade him to accept lead role, in Gangs of New York, 2002, is one of 13 actors to have won the Academy Award, BAFTA Award, Critics' Choice Award. Golden Globe Award and SAG Award for the same performance, There Will Be Blood, 2007, and Lincoln, 2012. The others in chronological order are Jeffrey Rush for Shine, 1996, Jamie Foxx for Ray, 2004, Philip Seymour Hoffman for Capote, 2005, Forrest Whitaker for The Last King of Scotland, 2006, Javier Bardem for No Country for Old Men, 2007, Heath Ledger for The Dark Knight. 2008, Christoph Waltz for Inglorious Bastards, 2009, Colin Firth for The King's Speech, 2010, Christopher Plummer for Beginners, 2010, J.K. Simmons for Whiplash, 2014, Leonardo DiCaprio for The Revenant, 2015, Sam Rockwell for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, 2017, and Gary Oldman for Darkest Hour, 2017. Quotes, on acting, if I weren't allowed this outlet, there wouldn't be a place for me in society. I suppose I have a highly developed capacity for self-delusion, so it's no problem for me to believe I'm somebody else. On whether or not he will act in films more often in the future, nothing happened over the course of Making Gangs of New York, 2002, that made me think, why don't I do this more often? In every actor's life, there is a moment when they ask themselves, is it really seemly for me to still be doing this, on Martin Scorsese? Martin doesn't have to convince me about anything. I can only say that I would wish for any one of my colleagues to have the experience of working with Marty once in their lifetime. If you get it twice, it's a privilege that you don't necessarily look for but you certainly don't try to avoid. Life comes first. What I see in the characters, I first try to see in life. The West has always been the epicenter of possibility. One of the ways we forge against mortality is to head west. It's to do with catching the sun before it slips behind the horizon. We all keep moving toward the sun wishing to get the last ray of hope, before it sets, on playing Jack Slevin in The Ballad of Jack and Rose, 2005, I was, as always, wary of taking on the role. This was a man whose soul was torn, and once you've adopted that kind of internal conflict, it's difficult to quiet, on disengaging from a character after filming, there's a terrible sadness. The last day of shooting is surreal. Your mind, your body, your spirit are not in any way prepared to accept that this experience is coming to an end. In the months that follow the finish of a film, you feel profound emptiness. You've devoted so much of your time to unleashing, in an unconscious way, some sort of spiritual turmoil, and even if it's uncomfortable, no part of you wishes to leave that character behind. The sense of bereavement is such that it can take years before you can put it to rest. Before I start a film, there is always a period where I think, I'm not sure I can do this again. I remember that before I was going to start There Will Be Blood, 2007, I wondered why I had said yes. When Martin Scorsese told me about Bill the Butcher in Gangs of New York, 2002, 
I wanted to change places with that man. But even then, I did not say yes right away. I kept thinking, I'm not sure I can do this again. On seeing his face on posters for the last of the Mohicans, 1992, that was, and will always be, difficult for me. The work itself is never anything, but pure pleasure. But there's an awful lot of peripheral stuff that I find it hard to be surrounded by. I like things to be swift, because the energy you have is concentrated and can be fleeting. The great machinery of film can work against that. I have never had a positive reaction to all the stuff that supposedly promotes the film. The thought of it will make me hesitate to do any films at all. On learning to box for the boxer, 1997, I wanted to see if I loved the sport, because if I didn't love the sport, I wouldn't want to tell the story. At its best, boxing is very pure. It requires resilience and heart and self-belief, even after it's been knocked out of you. It's a certain kind of a test. And it's hard. The training alone will kill you. And that's before people start giving you a dig. Playing the part of Christy Brown, in my left foot, 1989, left me with a sense of setting myself on a course, of trying to achieve something that was utterly out of reach, after filming the unbearable lightness of being, 1988, I was hopelessly at sea. I was extremely unhappy most of the time. I think I probably felt I'd made a fundamental error in agreeing to do that movie even though it was the part and the film that everyone wanted to do. And God help us, that is, in itself, a reason not to do something. While filming my left foot, 1989, I needed, and I still need, to create a particular environment. I need to find the right kind of silence or light or noise, whatever is necessary, and it is always different. I know it sounds a little fussy and a little ridiculous, but finding your own rhythm is one of the most important things you can discover about yourself, and you have to observe it. As actors, we're all encouraged to feel that each job is the last job. They plant some little electrode in your head at an early stage and you think, be grateful, be grateful, be grateful. So it's not without a sense of gratitude that I work. But I couldn't do this work at all unless I did it in my own rhythm. It became a choice between stopping and taking the time I needed. Why would I want to play middle-aged, middle-class Englishman? There's a quality of wildness that exists in Ireland that coincides with utter solitude. I've managed to create a sense of banishment in so many different areas of my life. I live in Ireland, not England. I make films in America. And now I'm banished from the theater because I've slagged it off so much. And I did the unspeakable thing of fleeing from Hamlet. On acting school, for a few years at school I tried to play the roles they wanted me to play, but it became less and less interesting to ponce around the place. Even now, when I sometimes think of doing a play, I think of rehearsal rooms and people hugging, and everyone talking over cups of coffee, because they are nervous. It's both very touching and it makes me a little nauseous and claustrophobic. Too much talk. I don't rehearse at all in film if I can help it. In talking a character through, you define it. And if you define it, you kill it dead. Laurence Olivier might have been a much better actor, on film if he hadn't had that flippant attitude. He, was a remarkable actor, but he was entirely missing the point consistently. Salary, The Crucible, 1996, $8 million. <laughs>